Adios. All right. Well, God has been blessing and moving here in our services, and for that I am truly thankful. And uh, He calls those things which are not as though they were, the Scripture says. And right now we may look and say, well, we're small. But God has been pouring out His Spirit in every service. We've been connecting with people throughout the community and uh, having an opportunity to talk about Jesus. And uh, when we get through the plowing stage and we move on to the planting stage, there will be a season of harvest. And uh, when it comes, we're going to have to move out of this facility and get something bigger. But uh, I just want to be a part of what God is doing. And I'm thankful for His many, many blessings. Amen. I want to preach to us for a few minutes on something the Lord laid on my heart a couple weeks ago, and I uh, felt this strongly in my spirit, and uh, I just believe that God wants to do something here today. I believe He wants to pour out His Spirit and move in our individual needs, situations, if we will have faith. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter number 4, and I want to read a few verses of Scripture. Amen. The book of Romans, chapter number 4, and I'm going to read the first three verses, and then we're going to skip down to verse number 13. Romans, chapter number 4, verse number 1, the scripture says, What shall we say then, that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works... He hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Amen. Let's get down to verse number 13. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham, or to his seed, through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not that only which is of the law, but to also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Verse 17, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those, calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. In verse 21, And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to to perform. Amen. For the next few minutes or so, I want to preach to us on this thought, the heart of a truest believer. The heart of a truest believer. Can you lay your Bibles down and lift your hands one more time and let's ask the Lord to help us here for the next little bit. Lord, I'm asking for your anointing today. God, I'm asking you to open our hearts. Lord, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Let our hearts be open and tender soft and pliable, Lord, in your presence. Help us, Lord, to respond to the moving working of your Spirit, Lord. Talk to us, God. Let your anointing break and utterly destroy every yoke, every chain, every shackle, Lord, in our lives. God, I pray that the demonstration and the power of your Spirit would operate in this service, Lord. We have faith to believe, Lord, for what you desire to do, Lord. We will praise you, Lord. We will worship you, Lord. We will release our faith, God, and we will lift you up, Lord, in this house, Jesus. I surrender to you today, God, to what you desire to do in my life, Lord. 
And I believe you, Lord, and I love you, Lord, and I praise you, Jesus. Lord, in your precious holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. As I preach the word, I encourage you to let your hearts be open and tender to the moving of God's presence. I feel the Holy Ghost here today. Amen. And I believe that God has impressed upon me early this week that God desires to do some mighty things in this service. We may look around and say, well, there's not too many people here, but that's all right. Amen. God knows exactly what He's doing. Amen. We read here a few moments ago that the Scripture says He calls those things which are not as though they already were. God knows exactly what He's doing. This is God's church, and we are His people. Amen. And I believe that God desires to pour out His Spirit in this service here today and do some tremendous things. You see, I may not know what you need today, and you may not know what I need, but Jesus Christ knows what we need, and He is able to perform it if we will exercise our faith. And trust Him for what He wants to do in our lives. Can you say amen? amen? Faith is the greatest tool in any Christian's arsenal. Some folks might be quick to rebuttal that and say no praise is. But I would argue that it's our faith that compels us to praise. That's it is our faith that compels us to worship God. And when we release our faith... We are entering into a realm of the supernatural. We are allowing God to operate in a platform where anything is possible. That's right. But a lot of times we limit what God wants to do in our life because Hallelujah. of our lack Hallelujah. of faith. All right. A lot of times we don't praise Him and we don't worship Him because we have a lack of faith. We may not want to put our finger on it and say that's really what it is. We may say, well, I'm just tired. I'm, you know, there's just a lot of things going on in my life. But if we truly had faith and believed with all of our heart without staggering at God's promises, saying, I know that God is able to meet me at the point of my need right now, that would compel me to lift my hands and worship Him, yes, to release my voice and give place to the moving yes. of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe it here this morning? Amen. By faith we pray. By faith we praise. By faith we worship. And by faith we persevere. Amen. The Apostle Paul declared to us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. That's right. Amen. We don't walk by the way we feel. We don't walk by what looks logical to us, what makes That's sense right. to us. That's right. The calling on any Christian, amen, is that we have to walk in a realm of uncomfortability where things don't always make sense, where we can't always make reason and rhyme out of it. When we look at it, we say, I don't understand how the dots are connected. Jesus never called us to walk by sight or by the way we feel or by the way that we can reason and make sense out of something. He says, if you're going to follow me, you've got to learn to walk by faith, right. not by sight. You've got to trust me with every step. When you put your left foot in front of your right foot, you're walking by faith. You're saying, Jesus, I'm taking this next step by faith. Lord, I'm taking this next step by faith. I'm going to trust you, Lord. I'm going to trust you with every step, with every move, with every endeavor. I'm going to believe you, Lord, for what you desire to do in my life today. Amen. Living for God involves trusting Him wholeheartedly at every turn, in every situation, and regardless of the circumstance. Faith also compels us to obey God's Word. Amen. Faith and obedience literally go hand in hand. That's right. Amen. That's right. So what is faith? The writer of Hebrews says in 11 and verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want you to notice here for just a moment that there is no comma between the word now and the word faith That's to right. separate thoughts or subject matters. 
Amen. The Apostle Paul, presumably right in here, was saying there's this entity called now faith. Faith for the moment. Faith for right now. Yes. Faith for this situation and this scenario. Faith for this circumstance. Faith for this adversity. Faith yes. for this problem. Faith, faith for this dilemma. Faith for today. Faith for right now. Faith for my need today. Amen. He's talking about living in the moment of faith. Taking every yes. step by faith. Everything we do is by faith. Yes. Saying, God, I don't just Hallelujah. think you can do it. I know that you can do it. I don't just think that maybe somehow it might work out. Yes. I believe that you're able to meet me at the point of my need right here, right now, yes. in this moment, in this situation, Lord. I have now faith to know that the things I can't see, you're able to bring to pass in a moment yes. of time. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There were a lot of prayer requests a few moments ago for cancer. And I mentioned my good friend, Pastor Sean Evans of West Virginia, Jesus, battling stage four cancer. Jesus. Amen. And they gave him a clean bill of health. And then they turned around and changed their report. Amen. But Isaiah said, who shall believe our report? Amen. Unto whom shall the arm of the Lord be revealed? The doctors may give us a bad report. But the Come Jesus on. that I serve. He's greater than yes. cancer. Right. He's able to heal cancer. He's able to dry it up, cause it to dissolve and go away through the power of His name. There is no name given among men a man whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus has all power and authority. Jesus is able to heal us. He's able to move and work a miracle in our lives. Amen. Now faith says that Jesus is the cancer healer. That's right. Now faith says that Jesus is the diabetes healer. Now faith says that Jesus is my financial consultant. Amen. He's able to change my present circumstance and turn it all around for His glory. Right. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Faith is confidence in the Word of God. Right. Amen. What the Bible says is absolutely true. Yes. John 17 and verse 7, Jesus said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. To walk by faith and not by sight means literally to take God at His Word. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. We say, Lord... I trust what you said. Come on. Amen. Somebody say that. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I trust what you said. I trust what you said. Amen. If God has given you a promise, friend, you've got to take him at his word. Come on. If God's ever given you a reassurance that everything's going to work out, you've got to cling to that word yes. and say, Lord, I believe it. I'm going to stand yes. on that. I claim that. I believe it with all of my heart. Jesus, I'm not going to stagger on what you said. I'm not going to resist what you said. Right. I'm going to be strong in my now faith knowing that you're able to do it. That you're able to bring it to pass in my life. Yes! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! If God's word says it, friend, that settles the issue. There can't be any doubt. Amen! If God's word said it, there's no point in continuing to argue and resist and contend with the matter. There's nothing else to say. Amen. No outside opinion matters. It doesn't matter what kind of report you get from the doctor or for somebody else. If God's Word says it, friend, you can count it as true. Because right. God is not a man that He should lie. Yes. Amen. His Word is truth. Yes. We can go to the book. We can open the Hallelujah. Scriptures and see what thus saith the Lord. Amen. And if God gives us a promise, we can take it to the bank. What we've got to do is have some now faith. Say, Lord, I'm yes. going to take you at your word. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm going to trust you. Even though I don't see it yet. Even though I don't feel it yet, Lord. Yes. I'm walking by faith yes. and not by sight. Hallelujah. I'm just going to keep worshiping. I'm just going to keep praising you. I'm just going to keep trusting yes. you, Lord, until I see the promise fulfilled in my life. Hallelujah. 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 When God called Abraham 
out of the land of his father. He said, Abraham, I want you to leave your mama and your daddy. I want you to leave your siblings. I want you to leave your childhood friends that you grew up with. I want you to leave everything that you've ever known. And I want you to go to a land that I will show you. He didn't even tell him where he was going yet. He just said, Abraham, I want you to leave where you're comfortable with what you're familiar with. And I want you to take a step of faith. And I'll show you when you get there where I want you to go. But what I need you to do, Abraham, is leave it all behind and start walking with me. Friend, he called Abraham to do it. And Abraham was strong in faith. Amen. He came from an idol worshiping family that did not know the one true. God. He came from a family that worshipped idol gods and images, but the God of glory, whose name is Jesus, he called to him one day and he said, Abraham, it's time to get out of Dodge. It's time to get out of this mess. I've got something better for you. I've got a greater experience for you. I need you to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't let your faith waver. Don't turn to the left or the right. Just trust me with all your heart. And I'm going to bless you in ways that will blow yes. your mind. Hallelujah. 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 And Hallelujah. Abraham took God at his word. He said, God has given me some words of instruction. And I'm going to believe it. And I'm going to obey it. Jesus. And I'm going to walk Jesus. by faith. Jesus. I'm not going to follow the way I feel. I'm not going to follow what seems right in my logic. I just know that God gave me a word and I'm going to walk in it. And I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to keep trusting it. Amen. The promises that God gave Abraham did not come to pass for a very long time. When he was about a hundred years old is when the Son of Promise finally became manifest into this world. That's a long time to wait for a promise from God. Amen. Many of us would get tired of waiting. We would wring our hands and worry and fret and say, I don't know if it's going to happen at all. I don't even know anymore if that was really God speaking to me. But Abraham said, i got a word from God. He gave me a promise. I'm going to keep being faithful. I'm going to keep walking by faith. I'm going to keep trusting Him until I see the fulfillment of that word in my life. Hallelujah. So Abraham, for that reason, is known as the father of the faithful. Abraham is best known for his faith and for his obedience. You see, he didn't just say, God, I believe that word and I claim it right now. Come on. That's what a lot of Christians in our world today say. They say, God, I hear you and I claim it. Mm -hmm. Abraham didn't do that. If he would have stayed in Haran with his family when God said, I want you to walk by faith and get out of here, Abraham never would have received the promise. But you see, our faith has to be coupled with our Come willingness on. to comply, our willingness to respond to yeah. the drawing of God's Spirit and the leading of the Holy Ghost. When God Jesus, says it's time to step Jesus. out, friend, we got to step out if we want to receive right. what God wants to give us. That's We've got to right. walk by faith. We've got to yes. walk in faith and confidence, yes. taking God at His Word. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God's Word is reliable, it's sure, it's durable, and it stands the test of time. The Bible says in Psalm 119 and 89, Forever, O Lord, Thy Word is settled in heaven. Amen. The day and age in which we live, a lot of people want to debate the Word of God. They say, well, that doesn't fit my cultural belief. That doesn't fit my agenda or my ideas. But friend... It's not God's fault that we refuse to comply with His Word. Because His Word is true. Come and on. His Word is already settled. Right. The problem right. is, I've got to make up my mind and say, Lord, right. I believe Your Word. I'm going to walk in Your Word. Yes. I'm going to stand in Your Word. Hallelujah. I'm going to live in Your Word. Because Your Word has some powerful promises for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When God's Word gives you a promise, you can count on it. And you can stand on it. Your faith in the validity Jesus. and certainty of God's Word is what's going to carry you through the hardships That's that you right. face in life. Amen. When you're feeling isolated and alone, 
when you're feeling discouraged and you're going through the molly grubs and you don't really know, amen, you're left from your right and you're north from your south, you can go to the Word of God because yes. the Word of God is your compass. Amen. Oh, it's a God. lamp unto your path, a light unto your feet. Amen. The Word of God will keep you going in the right direction. Amen. Oh, Whenever you're God. going through a valley and you're feeling discouraged, you can look in the Psalms and say, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow yes. of death, I turn around and He's still with oh, me. Yeah. He never left me. He never oh, forsaken yeah. me. Jesus is yeah. still with me. He's still by my side. Yeah. So I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to keep trusting. I'm going to keep on going because God is still working in my life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Abraham believed God. Jesus. That's what we read in Romans chapter 4. Abraham believed God. Now there's a difference between believing God and believing in God. That's right. You can believe that God exists mm -hmm. and not obey Him. Come on. You can believe that God is real and not be led, amen, by the Spirit. You can believe that God is out there somewhere and not trust Him Come and on. take Him at His word. Amen. But Abraham didn't just believe that God was real. Come he on. believed God. When God yeah. says, leave it all behind and start walking, I've got precious and powerful yes. mighty things Hallelujah. that I'm going to perform in your life. Abraham didn't say, I believe in you, God, and I claim that word. He said, I believe what you said, and I'm going to do it, Lord. Yes. I'm going to put one foot in front of the other, and I'm going to say, glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. I believe it. I'm going to keep trusting until I see it come to pass in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got to believe God for our need and for our situation. Yes. Amen. Whatever you need in your life today, you've got to believe God for it. That's right. Amen. If you want a circumstance to change, you've got to trust Him with all of your heart. Yes. You've got to believe that He is able and that He desires to move yes. in that situation and turn it around for His glory. That's you've got to right. know that you know that you know. Yes. You've got to be strong in Hallelujah. faith. You've got to exercise some now faith and say, Hallelujah. Lord, I don't know how, I don't Hallelujah. know when. I just know who He's yes. got me in the palm of His hand. I just know the God that I serve. He has all power in heaven and in earth. Yes. The stripes on His back on Calvary's cross paid the price for my healing. Yes. So cancer, you got to go. Diabetes, you got to go. Tumor, you got to go. Because yes. my Jesus is a healer. Hallelujah. And I believe in Him for my miracle today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody Jesus. say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the, Lord. the Lord. Psalm 18 and verse 30. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in Him. What the psalmist was saying was I've put the word of God to the test time and time again. And I have found it has never failed me yet. The Bible has never lied to me yet. The Word of God has never let me down and disappointed me yet. When I open the Scripture and I let the Word of God begin to talk to me, and God gives me a promise. Friend, the psalmist said, He's never let me down. He's right. never failed me. Yay. He's never come short of what He said He would do in my life. Ooh. Friend, if you need something from God here today, I tell you, the Word of God has been tried, and it has been proven true. The Word of God is faithful. Yay. And then the promises contained therein, you can stand on Him, and you right. can trust God for the fulfillment of His promises in your life. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Psalm 37 and verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. 
It didn't say he might bring it to pass. It didn't say maybe. He didn't say, well, if I feel like it, if I get around to it. He said, if you put your trust in me, if you will delight yourself in me. What does it mean to delight yourself in the Lord? Amen. That means that living for God is not a drudgery and a grudgeful situation to me. But living for God is something I take pleasure in. Living for God is something, amen, that I live to do. And I do it with all of my mind, all of my yes. soul, all of my strength. Because I love Him and I know what He has done in yes. my life. I delight in Him. Yes. I long for yes. His presence. I love Him. I love His Word. He delights me. He excites me in every area of my life. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. He is my Deliverer. He's the reason I woke up this morning. So therefore, I'm going to praise Him. And I'm going to worship Him. And I'm going to give Him my very best. Because I delight in Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the psalmist said, if you'll delight in Him. And you'll trust Him with all your heart. He will bring it to pass. Whatever you need, it does not matter what it is. God is able to move any mountain, to change any circumstance in any scenario. He can take a wall where there's no door and He can put a door there. He can take an impossibility and make it possible. My God specializes in the miraculous and all He asks of us is that we walk by faith. And not by sight. Yes. We've got to trust Hallelujah. Him. We've got to believe that He's going to do it. We've got to worship Him. And keep on keeping on. Until God brings it to pass in our life. If He works a miracle in me instantaneously. Hallelujah. I'm going to give Him glory. But if it's a gradual process. And it takes a little while. I'm going to do like Abraham did. And I'm going to keep walking. And I'm going to keep on walking by faith. I'm going to keep on trusting Him. Amen. Until I see the fulfillment of the promise in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3 and 5, a familiar verse of Scripture. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct thy paths. Amen. Solomon gave us a timeless piece of advice. He said, in everything that you do, you got to trust God. Right. It doesn't matter if you're going through a good day or a bad day. If you're on top of the mountain or if you're going through the valley. If the doctor gives you a good report or if the report is grim and bleak and terrifying. Amen. You've got to trust God with all your heart. You can't lose hope. You can't lose faith. You've got to have some now faith and say, I trusted God yesterday. I'm going to trust Him today. Amen. And right. if I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to trust Him tomorrow. I'm living right now by faith and not by sight. Because I know Just a couple more minutes. Abraham, Abraham never staggered at the promises of God. That's what we read that Paul wrote to the Romans. He said, Abraham, he never staggered at God's promises. When God said it, Abraham believed it. When God said, I want you to do this, Abraham did that. He walked by faith. He lived by faith. He trusted God. He waited patiently until God brought it to pass. He did not stagger. His faith did not waver. He didn't throw up his hands and quit. Amen. In impatience. He didn't say, God, I don't see it yet. So I guess it's never going to happen. Year after year after year, he kept walking by faith. He kept trusting God. He kept walking in that promise. He kept standing on that promise until the day that an angel of the Lord appeared. He said in nine months, according to the time of life, Sarah's going to have a baby boy and you're going to call him Isaac. This is the son of promise that I've been telling you all this time. I'm ready to bring it to pass, Abraham, because you have been faithful and because you believed me. Amen. 
A lot of times we miss out on what God wants to do in our life because we quit trusting. We quit believing. We lose hope. We get discouraged and we throw up our hands and quit. We say, well, it's been a long time and I guess maybe it wasn't God after all. Maybe it was just emotionalism. Maybe I just thought it was God, but maybe it was just my flesh. Maybe it was just my mind playing tricks on me. But friend, you've got to understand that living for God is completely in the realm of faith. When you feel like it, you got to walk by faith. When you don't feel like it, you got to walk by faith. When heaven, it seems like the angels of the Lord are all around you, you got to walk by faith. When it seems like you're surrounded by every demon in hell, you got to walk by faith. When everything's going right in your life, you got to walk by faith. When it seems like everything's turned upside down, you got to walk by faith. Your faith cannot stagger. Your faith cannot waver. Don't throw up your hands and quit. Don't turn your back on God. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Amen. Because in time, God's going to bring it to pass in your life. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I want to read one more verse of Scripture here. Many times, amen, our familiarity with situations and with the, with the situation 